The alien spacecraft descended through Earth's atmosphere, shimmering as it broke through the clouds. The alien students, full of anticipation, pressed their faces against the windows, eager to catch their first glimpse of the legendary deep world. They had heard countless stories about Earth, a planet known for its beauty and danger. As the craft landed smoothly on a designated platform, the students quickly disembarked, their eyes wide with curiosity. The city before them was a marvel of human engineering, with towering skyscrapers and bustling streets. Their human guide, Daniel, stood ready to greet them. Welcome to Earth, Daniel said warmly, extending his hand in a gesture of friendship. I am here to show you around and answer any questions you might have. Zyra, the most inquisitive of the group, was the first to speak. This city is enormous. How do humans manage so many people in such tall buildings? Daniel smiled at her enthusiasm. Humans have developed advanced technology and efficient systems to manage large populations and build safe structures. Our cities are designed to handle many challenges, including natural disasters. Jax, another student, looked up at the skyscrapers with awe. What happens if there's an earthquake? How do these buildings stay standing? Great question, Jax. Daniel replied, We construct our buildings with special materials and designs to withstand earthquakes. For example, this building over here, he pointed to a nearby skyscraper, is built with flexible materials and shock absorbers to help it move with the earth rather than collapse. The students followed Daniel to the base of the skyscraper, marveling at its construction. Zyra touched the wall, fascinated by its texture. Humans are incredible. They've thought of everything. Daniel nodded appreciatively. We've had to adapt to many challenges over the centuries. Our ability to innovate and prepare has been key to our survival. Now, let's continue our tour. There's so much more to see. As they walked through the city, the students were captivated by the sights and sounds around them. They saw bustling markets filled with colorful produce, parks where children played, and streets teeming with activity. The energy of the city was palpable, and the students couldn't help but feel excited. Suddenly, a loud siren pierced the air, causing the students to jump in surprise. What is that noise? Kira asked, her voice tinged with concern. That's a warning siren, Daniel explained. It alerts people to potential dangers like fires, storms, or other emergencies. It's part of our safety system. Right now, it's just a test, so there's no need to worry. The students relaxed, reassured by Daniel's explanation. They continued their tour, observing the intricate balance between human innovation and the natural environment. As they moved deeper into the city, they came across a building designed to demonstrate earthquake resistance. This building is a perfect example of how humans adapt to their environment. Daniel said, it's designed to sway with the motion of an earthquake, reducing the risk of collapse. Jax examined the building closely, impressed by the engineering. It's amazing how humans can build something so strong and flexible. Engineering and technology play a crucial role Daniel said, but education is just as important. People here participate in regular drills to know what to do when an earthquake hits. As they continued their exploration, they reached a quieter part of the city, near a large forest. The dense foliage and the sounds of wildlife intrigued the students. Daniel led them to a path that wound through the forest, promising an up-close look at Earth's natural beauty. These trees are so tall and thick, Zyra remarked, struggling to keep up with the group. It's hard to move through here. Daniel smiled at her enthusiasm. This forest is a natural barrier against strong winds and provides a habitat for many animals. Humans have learned to respect and coexist with these natural environments. As they walked, they suddenly heard a rustling in the bushes. A majestic tiger emerged, its orange and black stripes stark against the green background. The students froze, both in fear and fascination. What is that? Zyra whispered, her voice barely audible. That's a tiger, Daniel said calmly. It's one of the most powerful predators in this forest. 
but don't worry, if we respect its space, it will leave us alone. The tiger, uninterested in the group, slowly walked away, disappearing into the forest. The students let out a collective sigh of relief. It's so majestic and intimidating, Kira said, still shaken. Tigers are incredible creatures, Daniel agreed. They play a vital role in the ecosystem, keeping the balance by controlling the population of other animals. The students continued their journey, marveling at the diverse wildlife and lush vegetation. Each step revealed new wonders and potential dangers, reinforcing the planet's dual nature. Emerging from the forest, they found themselves at the edge of a vast river. The water flowed swiftly, carrying leaves and branches downstream. Daniel pointed to various features of the river's ecosystem, explaining how humans utilized and respected it. This river is essential for many communities, he said. It provides water, food, and transportation. However, it can also be dangerous, especially during floods. How do humans manage to live with so many dangers? Jax asked, genuinely puzzled. Adaptation, Daniel replied. Humans have learned to anticipate and prepare for these challenges. We build dams to control flooding, create warning systems, and educate people on safety measures. It's a continuous process of learning and adapting. As the sun began to set, the group made their way back to the city. The alien students were quiet, each lost in their thoughts. The day had been filled with eye-opening experiences showing them the delicate balance between survival and danger on Earth. Returning to their spacecraft, the students gathered in their common room to discuss the day's events. Earth is truly a fascinating place, Zyra said, breaking the silence. I never imagined it would be like this. It's both beautiful and frightening, Jax agreed. Humans have done an incredible job adapting to this world. Professor Xal nodded, pleased with their observations. You've all learned an important lesson today. Earth is a complex world, full of challenges and rewards. Understanding this balance is key to appreciating the resilience and ingenuity of the human race. As they prepared for the next day's exploration, the alien students felt a newfound respect for Earth and its inhabitants. They realized that while the planet was indeed a death world, it was also a place of incredible beauty and strength. The journey had only just begun, and they were eager to learn more about this remarkable world and the humans who called it home. The night passed peacefully, the students' minds buzzing with the day's experiences. They had come to Earth with questions and left with answers that challenged their perceptions and expanded their understanding. The dangers of Earth were real, but so was the incredible capacity of humans to overcome them. And that, they realized, was what made Earth truly unique. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, the students were ready for another day of discovery. The excitement and anticipation were palpable as they gathered their notes and prepared to embark on their next adventure. The lessons they had learned about human ingenuity and resilience were still fresh in their minds, and they couldn't wait to see what else Earth had in store for them. Daniel greeted them with a warm smile, clearly just as excited as they were for the day ahead. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to explore how humans prepare for and respond to natural disasters. These events can be catastrophic, but our ability to predict and mitigate their impacts is a testament to human ingenuity. The students boarded a sleek bus that would take them to their first destination a city known for its advanced earthquake preparedness measures. As the vehicle made its way through the countryside, Daniel provided some background information on the various types of natural disasters Earth experiences. Earth is prone to many types of natural disasters, such as earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, and volcanic eruptions. Each type presents unique challenges, he explained but humans have developed a range of strategies to minimize the risks and protect lives. Zyra, ever curious, leaned forward. How do humans prepare for something as unpredictable as an earthquake? Daniel smiled. We'll get to that soon. Our first stop is a city that sits near a fault line, 
which means it's prone to earthquakes. You'll see firsthand how they've adapted. The bus arrived in a bustling city nestled between towering mountains. The students could see evidence of past quakes in the architecture, reinforced buildings and wide open spaces designed for safety. Daniel led them to a tall structure with visible support beams. This is an earthquake-resistant building, he explained. It's designed to sway with the movement of the earth rather than break. Engineers use flexible materials and shock absorbers to minimize damage. Jax examined the building closely. It's amazing how humans can build something so strong and flexible. Engineering and technology play a crucial role, Daniel said, but education is just as important. People here participate in regular drills to know what to do when an earthquake hits. As they walked through the city, they saw signs pointing to designated evacuation routes and open areas where people could gather safely. These measures save lives, Daniel said. Preparation is key. Suddenly, the ground beneath them began to shake. It was a mild tremor, but enough to make the students gasp and grab onto each other. Is this an earthquake? Kira asked, her eyes wide with fear. Daniel remained calm. Yes, it's a small one. They happen frequently here. Just stay calm and follow the procedures. The students watched as people around them moved calmly to open spaces, demonstrating the practiced ease of years of preparation. Within minutes, the tremor subsided, and life returned to normal. That was intense, Zyra said, her heart still racing, but everyone seemed to know exactly what to do. Exactly, Daniel said. Preparation and practice make all the difference. Now, let's head to our next destination. The bus took them to the coast, where they would learn about hurricanes. The students were intrigued by the change in scenery. The ocean stretched out before them, vast and powerful. Daniel pointed to a building near the shore. This is a hurricane shelter. Coastal areas are vulnerable to hurricanes, which bring strong winds and heavy rains. People here have developed systems to track storms and provide early warnings. They entered the shelter a sturdy structure designed to withstand extreme conditions. Inside, they met Emma, a local emergency manager who explained how the shelter worked. We monitor weather patterns constantly, Emma said. When a hurricane is detected, we issue warnings and help people evacuate to safe areas like this one. We also have supplies to last through the storm. Jax looked around, impressed by the preparations. It's like a fortress. How often do hurricanes happen? Depends on the season, Emma replied. Some years are worse than others, but we're always ready. The key is to stay informed and act quickly. After leaving the shelter, Daniel took them to a floodplain. This area is prone to flooding, he explained. Humans have built levees and dams to control the water, but sometimes nature overwhelms these defenses. They visited a dam where an engineer named Mike showed them how it worked. This dam helps control the river's flow, Mike said. In times of heavy rain, we can release water gradually to prevent flooding downstream. Zyra peered over the edge, marveling at the engineering feat. Humans really do go to great lengths to protect themselves. Yes, Mike said, but we also respect the power of nature. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, disasters still happen. That's why it's important to be prepared and have plans in place. As they moved on to the next location, Daniel explained the challenges of living near a volcano. Volcanoes can be incredibly destructive, he said, but they're also a part of Earth's natural processes. Humans living near volcanoes have learned to monitor them closely. They arrived at a volcanic observatory, where scientists were tracking the activity of a nearby volcano. Dr. Stevens, a volcanologist, greeted them and showed them around. We use various instruments to measure volcanic activity, Dr. Stevens explained. Seismographs, gas sensors, and satellite imagery help us predict eruptions. Jax was fascinated by the technology. So, you can tell when a volcano is going to erupt. We can make educated guesses, Dr. Stevens replied. It's not an exact science, but we can often give enough warning to evacuate people and save lives. 
The students watched as the scientists monitored data in real time, preparing for any signs of an eruption. It's amazing how much effort goes into keeping people safe, Kira said. Dr. Stevens nodded. It's a constant effort, but understanding these natural processes helps us live more safely on this dynamic planet. After leaving the observatory, Daniel took them to a nearby town that had been rebuilt after a volcanic eruption. The students saw how the community had adapted, with reinforced buildings and clear evacuation routes. It's inspiring to see how resilient humans are. Zyra said, even after a disaster, they rebuild and move forward. That's the human spirit, Daniel said proudly. We face challenges head on and learn from them. It's what makes us resilient. As the day came to an end, the students reflected on everything they had seen and learned. They had witnessed the power of Earth's natural forces and the incredible ways humans adapted to them. The dangers were real, but so was the determination to overcome them. Back at the spacecraft, the students gathered for a final discussion with Professor Xal. Today, we've seen the resilience and ingenuity of humans in the face of natural disasters. Professor Xal said, What have you learned from this experience? Zyra spoke first. I've learned that preparation and education are crucial. Humans practice and plan for disasters, which helps them stay safe. Kira nodded, and they use technology to predict and respond to these events. It's impressive how they combine knowledge and tools to protect themselves. Jax added, I'm amazed by their resilience. Even after disasters, they rebuild and continue. It's a powerful lesson in perseverance. Professor Xal smiled, pleased with their insights. You've all gained a deeper understanding of Earth and its inhabitants. The challenges here are immense but so is the human capacity to adapt and thrive. As they prepared for their journey home, the students felt a newfound respect for Earth and its people. They had come to understand that while the planet was indeed a death world, it was also a place of incredible resilience and strength. The natural disasters they had witnessed were powerful, but so was the human response to them. The night passed peacefully, the students' minds, filled with the day's experiences, they had come to Earth with questions and were finding answers that expanded their understanding and appreciation of life. The dangers of Earth were real, but so was the incredible beauty and diversity it held. And that, they realized, made Earth a place worth exploring and respecting. As the spacecraft lifted off, the students looked down at the planet below with a sense of awe and respect. They had learned that Earth was a place of balance, a world of beauty and danger, resilience and fragility. And they realized that the true strength of Earth lay not just in its natural wonders, but in the people who called it home. The following morning, the alien students assembled in the common room, their anticipation palpable. Professor Xal stood before them, ready to begin the day's lesson. Today, we will delve deeper into one of Earth's most formidable aspects, natural disasters. These events can be catastrophic, but humans have developed ways to predict, prepare for, and respond to them. Daniel, their human guide, greeted them outside the spacecraft with his usual warm smile. Good morning, everyone. Today, we'll explore how humans deal with natural disasters. We'll visit different sites and meet people who manage these challenges daily. The students boarded a sleek bus that would take them to their first destination, a city known for its advanced earthquake preparedness measures. As the vehicle made its way through the countryside, Daniel provided some background information on the various types of natural disasters Earth experiences. Earth is prone to many types of natural disasters, such as earthquakes, hurricanes, floods, and volcanic eruptions, he explained. Each type presents unique challenges but humans have developed a range of strategies to minimize the risks and protect lives. Zyra, ever curious, leaned forward. How do humans prepare for something as unpredictable as an earthquake? Daniel smiled. We'll get to that soon. Our first stop is a city that sits near a fault line, which means it's prone to earthquakes. You'll see firsthand how they've adapted. 
The bus arrived in a bustling city nestled between towering mountains. The students could see evidence of past quakes in the architecture, reinforced buildings, and wide open spaces designed for safety. Daniel led them to a tall structure with visible support beams. This is an earthquake-resistant building, he explained. It's designed to sway with the movement of the earth rather than break. Engineers use flexible materials and shock absorbers to minimize damage. Jax examined the building closely. It's amazing how humans can build something so strong and flexible. Engineering and technology play a crucial role, Daniel said, but education is just as important. People here participate in regular drills to know what to do when an earthquake hits. As they walked through the city, they saw signs pointing to designated evacuation routes and open areas where people could gather safely. These measures save lives, Daniel said. Preparation is key. Suddenly, the ground beneath them began to shake. It was a mild tremor, but enough to make the students gasp and grab onto each other. Is this an earthquake? Kira asked, her eyes wide with fear. Daniel remained calm. Yes, it's a small one. They happen frequently here. Just stay calm and follow the procedures. The students watched as people around them moved calmly to open spaces, demonstrating the practiced ease of years of preparation. Within minutes, the tremor subsided, and life returned to normal. That was intense, Zyra said, her heart still racing. But everyone seemed to know exactly what to do. Exactly, Daniel said. Preparation and practice make all the difference. Now, let's head to our next destination. The bus took them to the coast, where they would learn about hurricanes. The students were intrigued by the change in scenery. The ocean stretched out before them, vast and powerful. Daniel pointed to a building near the shore. This is a hurricane shelter. Coastal areas are vulnerable to hurricanes, which bring strong winds and heavy rains. People here have developed systems to track storms and provide early warnings. They entered the shelter, a sturdy structure designed to withstand extreme conditions. Inside, they met Emma a local emergency manager who explained how the shelter worked. We monitor weather patterns constantly, Emma said. When a hurricane is detected, we issue warnings and help people evacuate to safe areas like this one. We also have supplies to last through the storm. Jax looked around, impressed by the preparations. It's like a fortress. How often do hurricanes happen? Depends on the season, Emma replied. Some years are worse than others, but we're always ready. The key is to stay informed and act quickly. After leaving the shelter, Daniel took them to a floodplain. This area is prone to flooding, he explained. Humans have built levees and dams to control the water, but sometimes nature overwhelms these defenses. They visited a dam, where an engineer named Mike showed them how it worked. This dam helps control the river's flow. Mike said, in times of heavy rain, we can release water gradually to prevent flooding downstream. Zyra peered over the edge, marveling at the engineering feat. Humans really do go to great lengths to protect themselves. Yes, Mike said, but we also respect the power of nature. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, disasters still happen. That's why it's important to be prepared and have plans in place. As they moved on to the next location, Daniel explained the challenges of living near a volcano. Volcanoes can be incredibly destructive, he said, but they're also a part of Earth's natural processes. Humans living near volcanoes have learned to monitor them closely. They arrived at a volcanic observatory where scientists were tracking the activity of a nearby volcano. Dr. Stevens, a volcanologist, greeted them and showed them around. We use various instruments to measure volcanic activity, Dr. Stevens explained. Seismographs, gas sensors, and satellite imagery help us predict eruptions. Jax was fascinated by the technology. So, you can tell when a volcano is going to erupt. We can make educated guesses, Dr. Stevens replied. It's not an exact science, but we can often give enough warning to evacuate people and save lives. 
The students watched as the scientists monitored data in real time, preparing for any signs of an eruption. It's amazing how much effort goes into keeping people safe, Kira said. Dr. Stevens nodded. It's a constant effort, but understanding these natural processes helps us live more safely on this dynamic planet. After leaving the observatory, Daniel took them to a nearby town that had been rebuilt after a volcanic eruption. The students saw how the community had adapted, with reinforced buildings and clear evacuation routes. It's inspiring to see how resilient humans are. Zyra said, even after a disaster, they'd rebuild and move forward. That's the human spirit. Daniel said proudly, we face challenges head on and learn from them. It's what makes us resilient. As the day came to an end, the students reflected on everything they had seen and learned. They had witnessed the power of Earth's natural forces and the incredible ways humans adapted to them. The dangers were real, but so was the determination to overcome them. Back at the spacecraft, the students gathered for a final discussion with Professor Xal. Today, we've seen the resilience and ingenuity of humans in the face of natural disasters. Professor Xal said, what have you learned from this experience? Zyra spoke first. I've learned that preparation and education are crucial. Humans practice and plan for disasters, which helps them stay safe. Kira nodded. And they use technology to predict and respond to these events. It's impressive how they combine knowledge and tools to protect themselves. Jax added. I'm amazed by their resilience. Even after disasters, they rebuild and continue. It's a powerful lesson in perseverance. Professor Xal smiled, pleased with their insights. You've all gained a deeper understanding of Earth and its inhabitants. The challenges here are immense, but so is the human capacity to adapt and thrive. As they prepared for their journey home, the students felt a newfound respect for Earth and its people. They had come to understand that while the planet was indeed a death world, it was also a place of incredible resilience and strength. The natural disasters they had witnessed were powerful, but so was the human response to them. The night passed peacefully, the students' minds filled with the day's experiences. They had come to Earth with questions and were finding answers that expanded their understanding and appreciation of life. The dangers of Earth were real, but so was the incredible beauty and diversity it held. And that, they realized, made Earth a place worth exploring and respecting. As the spacecraft lifted off, the students looked down at the planet below with a sense of awe and respect. They had learned that Earth was a place of balance, a world of beauty and danger, resilience and fragility. And they realized that the true strength of Earth lay not just in its natural wonders, but in the people who called it home. The next morning, the alien students gathered in the common room, their minds still buzzing with the knowledge they had gained about Earth's natural disasters. Professor Xal stood before them, ready to embark on another day of exploration. Today, we will witness how humans recover and rebuild after disasters, he announced. We will see firsthand the resilience and ingenuity that have enabled them to thrive on this planet. Their human guide, Daniel, greeted them outside the spacecraft. Good morning, everyone. Today, we'll explore how humans rebuild and recover after natural disasters. We'll visit places that have faced significant challenges and see how communities come together to overcome them. The students boarded the bus, and as it drove through the countryside, Daniel began to explain their itinerary. Our first stop is a coastal town that was severely damaged by a hurricane a few years ago. The people there have worked hard to rebuild and improve their resilience to future storms. As they arrived in the town, the students could see the remnants of past devastation alongside new, sturdy structures. They met with Mayor Linda, who had been instrumental in the town's recovery efforts. Welcome, Mayor Linda greeted them. Our town was hit hard by a hurricane, but we have rebuilt stronger than before. Let me show you around. The students followed Mayor Linda through the town, observing the newly constructed buildings designed to withstand strong winds and flooding. Zyra was particularly impressed. 
These buildings look so strong. How did you manage to rebuild so quickly? We had help from neighboring communities and government support, Mayor Linda explained. But most importantly, we worked together. Everyone contributed, whether it was clearing debris, rebuilding homes, or providing emotional support. Jax looked around at the bustling town. It's amazing to see how the community came together. How did you ensure everyone was prepared for future hurricanes? We learned from our experiences. Mayor Linda replied, We implemented stricter building codes, created emergency plans, and educated our residents on hurricane preparedness. We also built more shelters to ensure everyone has a safe place to go during a storm. Kira was curious about the personal stories of resilience. Can you tell us about someone who played a key role in the recovery? Mayor Linda smiled. There are many heroes, but one that stands out is Sarah. A local teacher, she organized a group of volunteers to provide food and supplies to those in need. She also helped children cope with the trauma by creating a support group at the school. The students were moved by Sarah's story. It highlighted the human spirit of compassion and determination. As they continued their tour, they saw a memorial dedicated to the lives lost during the hurricane. It served as a reminder of the importance of preparation and community solidarity. Their next destination was a mountainous region prone to landslides. The students saw how the community had adapted to this threat by terracing the hillsides and planting vegetation to stabilize the soil. They met with an engineer named Alex, who explained the measures in place to prevent landslides. We've implemented various strategies to reduce the risk of landslides, Alex said. Terracing helps to manage water flow, and vegetation roots hold the soil together. We also monitor the weather and soil moisture levels to predict and respond to potential landslides. Zyra was fascinated by the intricate balance between human intervention and nature. It's incredible how you've managed to work with the environment to reduce risks. Working with nature is essential. Alex agreed, we can't completely control it, but we can learn to live in harmony with it. The students saw firsthand how the community had turned their knowledge into action, creating a safer environment while preserving the natural beauty of the region. The final stop of the day was a town near an active volcano. They met Dr. Stevens again, the volcanologist they had met previously, who explained how the town had adapted to living with the constant threat of an eruption. This town has been evacuated multiple times due to volcanic activity. Dr. Stevens said, Each time, we learn more and improve our response plans. The key is to stay informed and be ready to act quickly. The students saw the town's emergency response center, where residents could receive real-time updates on volcanic activity. They also visited a school where children practiced evacuation drills regularly. Jax was impressed by the level of preparedness. How do you keep everyone informed and ready to evacuate at a moment's notice? We use multiple channels of communication, Dr. Stevens explained. We have sirens, mobile alerts, and community meetings. Education is crucial, so everyone knows what to do in an emergency. The students were inspired by the resilience and determination of the town's residents. They saw how the community had built stronger homes, created evacuation routes, and maintained a constant state of readiness. As the day came to an end, the students reflected on everything they had learned about human resilience and recovery. They had witnessed the power of community, the importance of preparation, and the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Back at the spacecraft, the students gathered for a final discussion with Professor Xal. Today, we've seen how humans recover and rebuild after disasters. Professor Xal said, What have you learned from these experiences? Zyra spoke first. I've learned that community and cooperation are essential. When people work together, they can overcome even the most devastating challenges. Kira nodded. And preparation is key. By learning from past experiences and staying informed, humans can reduce the impact of future disasters. Jax added, I'm amazed by the resilience and determination of humans. They don't just survive, they find ways to thrive and improve their lives. 
Professor Xal smiled, pleased with their insights. You've all gained a deeper understanding of Earth and its inhabitants. The challenges here are immense, but so is the human capacity to adapt and thrive. As they prepared for their journey home, the students felt a newfound respect for Earth and its people. They had come to understand that while the planet was indeed a death world, it was also a place of incredible resilience and strength. The natural disasters they had witnessed were powerful, but so was the human response to them. The night passed peacefully, the students' minds filled with the day's experiences. They had come to Earth with questions and were finding answers that expanded their understanding and appreciation of life. The dangers of Earth were real, but so was the incredible beauty and diversity it held. And that, they realized, made Earth a place worth exploring and respecting. As the spacecraft lifted off, the students looked down at the planet below with a sense of awe and respect. They had learned that Earth was a place of balance, a world of beauty and danger, resilience and fragility. And they realized that the true strength of Earth lay not just in its natural wonders, but in the people who called it home. 